Hello and welcome. This is a walkthrough of the Cisco Packet Tracer Lab uh, 5.3.2.8 uh, called Examine the ARP Table. It's part of the CCNA Routing and Switching 6.0 material uh, of the part Introduction to Networking. So 5.3.2.8, Examine the ARP Table. So let's have a look at what to do here. Uh, we should examine an ARP request and look at the switch MAC address table and we should uh, look at the remote the ARC, ARP process in remote communication. This activity is optimized for viewing BP, uh, PDUs. The device are already configured. Uh, you will gather a PDU in simulation mode and also questions. Step one, uh, generate ARP request by pinging. Click 172.16.31.2 and and ping ping 172.16.31.3 so we'll see if we will get an answer here okay yeah we are in um, we are in simulation mode okay so it nothing happens enter simulation mode and enter the uh, ping two PDUs will be generated. Actually, I did a wrong uh, ping first, so let's start this all over. We do like that, and we use a ARP minus D, because I think we need to clear the ARP table, and we start all over again. So, we are asked to, in simulation mode, uh, ping 172.16.31.3. So we do that. Now I was not in simulation mode. ARP minus D and simulation mode. Okay. It's hard to follow directions. Ping like that. Enter simulation mode and enter ping. Two PDUs will be generated. The ping command cannot complete the ICMP packet without knowing the MAC address of the destination. So the computer sends an ARP broadcast to find the MAC address of the destination. So we can see here that we have an ARP and an ICMP, ICMP and the ARP is a broadcast it's sent to the layer 2 address FFFFFF and it's sourced from IP 31.2 and it wants to know the um, IP address of of what? 31.2 Oh, this one okay yeah here we have it this is the ARP it wants to know the ARP and the Mac uh, I, the Mac address of the IP 31.3 which it wants to talk to uh, and uh, click move capture forward once the ARP PDU moves to switch one will while the ICMP PDU disappears waiting for the ARP reply open the PDU and record the destination MAC address is this address listed in the table above so in next step, the packet, I, I press capture forward here to move one step. The PDU comes to the switch and we look at the layer two. It's two FFFFFFFF. And the question is if that is uh, it addressed, uh, listed in the addressing table. Uh, no, it's a broadcast address, so it's not. Oh, next step. How many copies uh, did the switch make? Since it's a switch, it depends on if it knows the destination. And it's since it's a, a broadcast, it will send it to all ports. So let's verify that. Yeah, it sends it out on all other ports. And uh, the ICMP PDU disappears, wait for the ARP reply, open the PDU and record the destination MAC address. Now we did that. How many copies did it switch to? What is the IP address of the device that accepted the PDU? What is the IP address? It's the 31.3 because it was to... Uh, to um, it was his, uh, he, he sensed that he should answer the ARP request. 
open the PDO in XML layer 2. What happens to the source and destination MAC address? Uh, now this is actually the ARP, and the ARP is destined for the de for the MAC address, for, for the uh, broadcast address. So I guess we should uh, move one step further. And this is actually the it does not care about that ARP because it was not destined for him. And this was the ARP and it was destined for him. So in the next step he will answer the ARP. And he will send the uh, ARP reply. Which is uh, has a, a 31.2 as a, des a destination. It's a reply back from dot three to two dot two, And it is destined for the... 1DA7 MAC address, which is the MAC address of 31.2. What's the IP address of the device that accepted the PDU? We know that. Open the PDU in XML2. What's the source and destination MAC address? We did that. Press capture forward until the PDU returns to 31.2. How many copies of the PDU did the switch make during the ARP reply? It sent only one because it knew about the destination MAC address. It knew that this destination MAC address uh, was on that port, so it did only send it out on one port. Okay, so uh, the, this one has received the ARP reply um, and the ICMP reappears. Open the PDO and examine the MAC address and the MAC address destination. Uh, Destination MAC address is 2849 on the end, and we should have a look at this one. And we'll see. 2849. So this is the destination MAC address. So the, the outbound ICMP is destined for the 31.3 on layer 3. And the, um, uh, let's see, which was this one? We should have a look at this one. This was the... Um, actually, which one is which? Yeah, this is the ICMP going to the switch. Going to the 2849. Coming from 1DA7. And the switch knows about all the MAC addresses. So it will only send the ICMPs on the correct port. And not to, to the 314, for example. Uh, note that the uh, ICMP reappears. Open the PDO and examine the MAC address. Do the app MAC address of the source and destination align with their IP addresses? Yes, they did. And switch back to real time and the ping completes. So it will run finished. Look at the third one dot two and uh, run ARP minus A to look at the ARP table. And we can see here that the ARP uh, table is now filled with the entry of the MAC address of 31.3. So this guy here, this guy 31.2, knows about the MAC address for 31.3, which is in the ARP table. Uh, so this means also that we can now, next time we ping, we do it faster, because we don't need to send another ARP request. So the ARP is cached in the local machine of the, of the computer. From 31.2, ping uh, 31.4. So we do that. We should ping from 31.2 to 31.4. So I wonder what we are supposed to do. We're pinging here from here to there. And we will do that. Click on 10, 10, 10, 2 and open the uh, command prompt. So we go to the, this one, to, to the, uh, now we are over here, on this guy here. And we are supposed to ping, ping 10.10.10.3. How many replies were sent and received? Yeah, we was four were sent and four were was replied. 
re received. Uh, I wonder what I expect for here. Yeah, four sent and four received. Examining the MAC address table on the switches. Click switch one. Uh, switch one. And look at the CLI tab. So we are on the rightmost switch. And we do a show MAC address table. And we can see here on switch one, the entries, does the entries correspond bond to those in the table above? So we can see that the switch one to the right, the rightmost switch here knows about the MAC address uh, 1DA7. And 1DA7 is the third one dot two. It knows about that. We'll write those addresses down actually. We have we have one D A seven here. We have on that port. Where is my switch? There it is. And we have eight D seven five on one port. Uh, 875 is third one four. It, we know about this MAC address here. We know about this MAC address. We know about this MAC address. We know about it was that one and that one. Four uh, two eight four nine. Two eight four nine is the thirty one dot three. We know about that MAC address. And we know about the MAC address uh, that ends with eight nine oh one. And that's the router gig zero. So we know about that MAC address, yeah. So the switch knows about all MAC addresses in the topology. And we expect that we should look at the same on the other switch, I guess. Um, on switch zero, enter the CLI, enter the MAC address table. So we do the same here on switch zero. Show MAC address table, and here we can see the MAC addresses 2501. I have too many windows, too low resolution on my screen. 2701, which is the router interface, and we have 4AB6, which is the wireless 10.10.10.2. And we see 572B, which is the 10, 10, 10, 3. So this switch knows about the MAC address of this guy, and this guy, and this guy, which is all they need to switch traffics, traffic between the, the devices. So it just has a full view of everything in the topology. Now we should start with clearing the screen here. It's too messy. Click 31.2 and open a command prompt and ping 10.10.10.1. 10, 10, 10, first of all, what is the new ARP table entry here? Let's first have a look at the ARP table. ARP minus A. And then we'd ping. 10, 10, 10, 1. And we have in the ARP table of uh, 31.2, we have, so in the ARP table of, of this guy, we have this MAC address and this MAC address. And we are pinging from here to there, going through over there. And it, the traffic is routed here and there. And so we send traffic on layer 3 to 10, 10, 10, 2, on layer 2 to this MAC address. So what they expect us to conclude here is that we first need to know the MAC address of this guy, this default gateway. I guess that may be 31.1. I haven't looked at the uh, network table here, but we can do that. Let's have a look at the 
addressing uh, router. Oh, we don't have the Mac IP address here. Yeah, we, we try to ping. So we ping from this guy, 31.2, to a remote network, and the traffic will be routed. So we send it to the default gateway, and the layer 2 destination address of the ping will be the router interface. And to know the MAC address, the, uh, the, the machine ne first needs to send out an ARP. So that's what, that's what will happen here. So it asks us to ping and uh, how many no we are down here sorry it asks us to click and ping and arp minus a was the address of new arp entry uh, arp table so it would be 10 10 10 uh, no 31 1 i guess so we do that and with arp minus a and we can see that it's 31 1 is mac address 8901 so we needed the mac address of this uh, device here or this interface to uh, send the packet in that direction. ARP minus, minus D to clear the ARP table and switch to simulation mode. ARP minus D. So we can see that the ARP table is empty and we change to simulation mode. And I guess they want us to do the same again. Repeat the ping. So we do a new ping and we will see how many PDUs disappears? It's actually two, two uh, uh, PDUs, one ARP and one ICMP. It should be here. We have the uh, ARP. It's a broadcast. And here we have the uh, uh, ICMP packet. Click at the, P the new PDU that is now at switch one. So we uh, for capture forward, so to switch the packet, the PDU of the broad of the ARP broadcast goes to switch the switch. And uh, what is the target destination IP address of the ARP request? The target destination IP address is not the 1000 uh, address because the ARP is not sent uh, to outside the local network. The destination address is the uh, local next hop because that's the IP address we need to have the uh, MAC address for. Remember that the ARP is a broadcast to find out the MAC address of a given la layer 3 IP address. So we need to tell which IP address we need to have the MAC address for. And that's in the destination field of on layer 3. So it sends out to that IP address on layer 2. Or actually, it, it's destined to in, la in the layer 2 header, but it, it's we say that we need to know the, IP, the MAC address for 31.1 and nothing else. So they, in for the ARP, the 10 addresses is totally irrelevant because the ARP, the, the 10 network is not a local network. So switch to real time, click router 1 and tab. We go to that and we go to router 1 and CLI tab. So we enter enable mode and we do a show MAC address table in the router and we can see uh, it, there is no entry for 31.2. What happens to the ping in a situation where the router responds to the ARP request? What happens to the first ping where the router responds to an ARP request? It um, Most often it times out actually because it takes too long time for the ARP to uh, to reply and then the, the ICMP to be sent and received. So the I, I first ping usually times out. So I guess this was it. Uh, this was what we were supposed to do. And uh, yeah, this was a quite short walk through of the Packet Tracer Lab 5.3.2.8 named Examine the ARP table. Part of the CCNA routing and switching 6.0 material and the uh, part called Introduction to Networking. Thanks for watching.